Okay, hi boys and girls. We are here at the U-Haul place. I drove all over St. Petersburg trying to find a U-Haul place and I don't, I couldn't figure out why I was going through so much stuff. And I ended up going to a thrift shop, I mean a, a U-Haul place that is a Christian thrift shop and a U-Haul place at the same time. The spirit of Jesus of Nazareth is an actual spirit person that you can befriend and become close to. The spirit of Jesus of Nazareth is actually the only safe and comfortable place that you can visit in this cosmos. And so after I'm done my moving job, this amazing new buddy is sitting here and he tells me this story. He tells me this story and he promised me that he'd tell the story to you guys too. He tells me this story that's just to beat the band. So have a seat and tell the story one more time. What's your name again? John. John. So John tells me the story of this guy that he meets and this meeting that he goes to. And I want you to amp up the oh, feeling, the amp up the feeling I'll that you had with the strangers around you. You mean the Jewish man? The yeah, Jewish yeah. Man yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, we were working at a hotel, and I was really messed up on drugs and alcohol, and he was telling me about Jesus. And I said to him, what are you, a child? I mean, I said, what are you, a Jehovah Witness? And he <laughs> said, no way. He said, I am a child of the living God. And I thought about that, and I never heard it put that way before. Really. I, mean, I am a child of the living God. Yeah, that was right. a pretty hot one. So I started to listen to him, and he would give me little Bible tracts, and I was reading, and it started to make sense. You know, it started to reveal the reality of Jesus. Like, for example, you ever seen Jesus on the cross? Being a good Catholic, that's all I knew about him. I thought he was dead on the cross. Okay? Shows you how dark people can get. When I heard that Jesus is alive, I was like, what? How, how can this be? So I went to church with Lyle. And that was the mass name. And it was an Assembly of God church. And uh, I never, ever, ever, ever heard of anything called speaking in tongues or interpreting or prophesying. I never. It wasn't. It was non-existent as far as I could understand. So when I went into the church there, the man that I walked in there with Lyle, he seemed really normal when we walked in. There was nothing different about him. And then all of a sudden, when I sit there in the church and they start to talk and and pray and open the Bible. And I look at the, the guy that I walked in there with, and instead of him being who he was, I see him going like this, oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I love you, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> and I look at this guy, and I said, wait a second, man. This is a different guy than I just walked in here with. And like I was telling you, I said, this guy looks like they're, they're, he's an alien in a body, but he's somewhere else, but is, he's in his body here. And I was like, this is really strange. Okay, so I'll stand by for a second. So he actually got a feeling in his guts. There was something that these inside of him that, he, that was different. That these people that he had already met had actually changed somehow and were alien to his ordinary character, which is really wild. I never heard a little little piece like that. Go they ahead. They weren't so, real aliens, but right, they, they were weren't very, real very different. But he was perceiving something that was out of the ordinary. Right. And so they're all there and they're they're I never saw such a deep love inside of their heart towards somebody or anything like that in my life. So, to continue on, the one man, I'm watching my friend do that, looking, Jesus, Jesus, and another guy, and I look to the other man, he's doing similar, the same thing, another person, the same thing, another person, and I said, whoa, this is really strange, I've never seen this before. And then one man got up and he put his hands up in the air like that, he stood up and he spoke in his language that I didn't know what it was, I didn't even know what language it was. And then another person next to him, I know what it is now, it's tongues and interpretation. But another person next to him looked at me and he said, Thus saith the Lord, Look to no other man, my child, for I have called you out of darkness into my marvelous light. And then I realized that the second that I was walk watching man to man to man, the Lord Jesus was sitting there watching me, Look from man to man to man, and he said, Look to no other man, my child, for I have called you out of darkness into my marvelous light. Which I think that means, clearly, look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. So, you want me to tell about the building here? 
Well, um, no, I just really wanted to get that little taste That's because fine. That's because wonderful. that because that first. See, I never heard about tongues. My mom was told by some Haitian missionaries, hey, study the word the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost in the Bible. Read every Amen. passage that says the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit. And she was basic. She played the organ in Lutheran Church on Sundays, but she really didn't totally believe in the Bible and Jesus and stuff like that. She read every passage in the Bible through a concordance that says Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. And every time the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is mentioned, something really wild and cool and amazing and beautiful <laughs> and touching happens, right, in the Bible. Yeah. So, so she read like 80 or 90 little passages. And by the time she was done, she said, she's actually she was by herself. She spoke out loud. She said, God, I want this Holy Spirit. Yeah. And something shifted in the ether. And then she started talking to God again, saying, wow, you're doing something. And she went to, like, to say, wow, what's going on? And what came out of her mouth, she didn't understand. It was like, Tosa yeah. Rabaka Laba. And she, then she thought she was dreaming. And she tiptoed into the bathroom and turned the water on and put her hands under the water to see if she was dreaming or not. She's like, no. She's a nurse. It's, it's like, a, you know, orientation to day and time and all that kind of stuff. She's like, no, the water's wet and it's cold. I'm, it's, this is really me. So she stood there and she looked in the mirror for an hour. She's talking in this Holy Spirit language that she had no clue about, that she had never been taught about. She was like, da, da, ba, la, ba, la, ba. And so then she called her girlfriends and her Bible study leaders and said, it happened to me, it happened to me. Just like in the Bible, I spoke in tongues and prophesied. And then they all got kind of scared and terrified and like, well, this now you know Jesus is coming to your heart, but just, just don't tell anybody because some churches will do that, that language and some churches don't and our churches don't. And some people are kind of, confused by that it can it create can create a lot of controversy and stuff and they actually basically scolded her and feared they wow. put fear around her that she would be not respectable if she was using that language and she did not tell me that a supernatural event happened in yeah, my own exactly family until too. i was like 38 40 years old so the reason why I'm collecting this story from this guy who like walked in, he had this feeling of like something is different here. Yeah. These men that I already know are in, it's almost like they're in a different spirit. They're in an alien mode that is beautiful and Jesus. amazing, but they were in Jesus and in the spirit of Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. Remember, there's a scripture in Luke, I think it's Luke 12, that says, Jesus says, look, if somebody slanders my name, and somebody says, I hate Jesus, or all this Jesus junk, I hate it, it's a bunch of bullshit. If somebody slanders my name, they will be forgiven. But if anybody slanders the spirit that I send, will not be forgiven. Not in this age and the next age. So you got to watch out. Because people, even in Christianity, will slander other people that are actually being led by the Holy Spirit. It's like, Oh, God wouldn't want you to do that, and blah, 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 and these people are that, blah, 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 All that slander towards human beings and their act, activities and operations is very dangerous. Remember, the spirit of Jesus of Nazareth wants to be friends with you and give you the surprise language. Even if you're not religious, even if you're outside of Christianity and Jesus and Bible, he actually wants to give you his spirit and give you that spirit language so you can kind of Get your baby steps on and get your, your heart connected with God as a spirit friend, not just as some religion. And that one thing that this dude said, I mean, I drove all around St. Petersburg trying to figure out where the heck the U-Haul place was just so I could pick up this guy's story of walking into a group of ordinary people yeah. in New York City and feeling like these people are aliens, they got a different language, and something of love more amazing than I've ever seen is, is happening in this room. And this guy made his shift. And, and just remember the Christian thrift shop joint in St. Petersburg because there's some conflicts and financial struggles and property yeah. questions and who's going to own this place. And there's some stuff going on around here. So remember John and the U-Haul Christian thrift shop hut in St. Petersburg and send good energy, power, prayer, blood of Jesus Holy Spirit fire over this place Amen. and these operations. Thanks so much. Yep. Thank you, thank you. I never...
it's hard for me to turn this thing off. There we go. 